For anyone who hadn't heard, my fiance claims he can freeze time and that some sort of monster appeared from one of his frozen moments. He's been missing for three weeks now. I've been trying to find him since I got out of the hospital. I guess he forgot that he gave me his Reddit password. I finally found his story. And his firewall. His name is Sean. He's a really sweet guy. We were going to be married sometime next year. No idea if that's still happening. I didn't know what to think about the ability he had. On some level, I think I always thought it was some kind of magic trick he could do. It bothered me a little that he seemed to really believe in it, though. But the thing is, I could never disprove it. And I tried. I tried writing things on the other side of the house and before asking him to go read them. And every time he'd look at me, smile, and recite what I'd written word for word like he was just pulling it out of my head. He even pointed out a spelling error one time that happened. He even let me forget. He would never let me forget. You know how that goes. If he really could freeze time, I have no idea what he's doing as a regular but successful office worker. He's working in accounting. If he could freeze time, shouldn't he be employed by the military as some sort of super spy? Uh, I don't know. I guess he'd rather use it to spy on girls. Odd is that true? I was one of those volleyball players. That's just creepy. He claimed it was because he didn't want to do that stuff, and I can respect that. Although the locker room stuff part, but whatever. He just wanted a normal life. He also said there was too many limitations. I've clung to the idea that whatever he was doing, it wasn't freezing time. That shouldn't be possible. I mean, he did. Uh, how come he can move through air particles? How can he breathe and process oxygen? The physics makes no sense. It had to be some kind of magic trick, right? For a while, it was just a quirk, but it started to get serious. First, he came home one day and looked all kinds of flustered. He told me he saw something after he froze time. Something had moved. He said he started screaming in the middle of town. I actually got a text from my friend who saw it happen asking if he was okay, so he definitely did scream in public. Then he told me all about that egghead shadow. I'm pretty good at reading people. He was legitimately scared of something. But what could he have possibly seen? If his powers were real, it's even scarier. What could possibly move between the frozen moments of one person in free-flowing time? Things went downhill after that. But you already know that. I started seeing the egghead. I never got a good look, but uh, it was always just a glimpse of an, an elongated limb in my peripheral or a shadowy flitting by a doorway. And it was all occupied by a weird chill that would give me goosebumps and make, the, make me want to panic. Then things started moving. I'm telling you, I thought it was just a typical ghost story at first or maybe i had some creepy stalker moving my things when i wasn't looking then one time i swear a bottle of perfume i was looking directly at vanished before my eyes it just blinked out of existence and left me wondering whatever it had even been there in the first place sean said he couldn't move things like that so was it this egghead then came that night that night i truly saw the egghead for the first time i saw it clearly and it was even worse than sean described it was reaching for me with gangly limbs and elongated fingers those white voids where eyes would be seemed to sink into the air around them and there was a mouth just a little half moon slit filled by the same white void as his eyes which gave it a freaky, frowny face. I screamed, fell, and almost died when I landed on a pair of scissors. Sean got me to the hospital. I remember telling him he loved me. I remember him telling me he loved me. That was the last time I saw him. He was in contact for a, about maybe a week. I kept trying to convince him to come home. His responses got uh, erratic. 
Then they stopped. A day later, the egghead reappeared right in my face. I stepped out of the shower and there it was. Its flesh was like a black void. Its eyes were like empty holes leading to pure whiteness. Just like Sean described, my body froze. But I was left aware as the thing took a wobbly step towards me. I couldn't move my eyes. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't do anything. Soon, it was inches from me. I could taste it. Since I couldn't breathe, I couldn't smell it or anything. But its rank, metallic aura pulled all over me all the same and stained my immobile tongue. It tasted like death. I was forced to stare into its eyes. I saw something in them. Something in the endless white. I'm trying to think of the words to describe what I saw. But I... But I... I can't. There was a sudden crash and a whirl of noises. Suddenly, I could move again. Just like the first time I fell on my butt. No scissors were there to stab me this time. When I finally got my bearings, I found the egg had gone and the house empty. I wanted answers. I found my way to this Reddit page and read this his account. I've been looking into things since. The number of fatal accidents keep increasing. Does that mean Sean failed? Time is still moving and bad things are still happening. Uh, I was going to wait and hope that he'd contact me again. The last text he sent me said, I think I found it. Then, nothing. I went to the police and I filed a missing persons report and all. I've talked to his parents and friends. I had to tell them I didn't know what he's doing, which wasn't a lie, but I still admitted the part about the time freezing shadow guy. I can't stay quiet now, though. Something is happening to me, and it's growing intensely. It started as just a headache. I figured it was just stress. I mean, I almost died, and my fiancé vanished soon after. My friends all think he stabbed me himself, and I'm covered for him. That really sucks. So, of course, I'm stressed. I wasn't particularly surprised when I felt it the first time. It was almost like a scratching sensation. When happening inside my skull it was it was both it both was and wasn't physical i almost felt like i could hear it for a second it sounded like rusty metal being dragged against more rusty metal but maybe with a dash of something organic or sort of wet squelch it lasted maybe five seconds, and then my head started to throb. Like I said, I thought it was just a headache and ignored it, but it keeps happening. It almost seems to happen at random times. I haven't figured out a pattern yet. I'll just be staring into space. I've been doing that a lot these days. And then all of a sudden, I feel this scratching, and my head throbs. I didn't think it was anything but stress until it happened while I was moving. I've never felt anything like it. Along with the headache and the scratching, it felt like I'd entered a cloud of mo uh, molasses. I could barely move, and as I did move, I was way slower than it should have been. That was when I started to suspect it had something to do with Sean and that thing. I had no idea how. It makes no logical sense. Is time breaking down around me? Why do I feel anything? If time stopped, why would I even be aware? As far as I can tell, time is just moving forward normally. I still don't know. It keeps happening, though. The last time it happened, my nose started bleeding. It's been two days. He's gone. I was in a frozen moment at some point. I was typing and my computer keys just stopped working. They suddenly felt as solid as steel. and wouldn't move no matter how I pushed. 
I looked around and everything was frozen. It's just like Sean described. Everything is frozen in place. It was raining outside. The droplets were like little cold glass roadblocks. I couldn't move them. So I was trapped in the house. And that thing was there. It looked different this time. It wasn't as elongated. And I swear it was trying to talk to me. But it sounded like its voice was a million miles away. Or maybe a few moments in the past or future? It didn't seem male malevolent. It kept gesturing at me. Its white eyes were wide circles. For a time, it looked like it was mimicking the motions of writing something on a piece of paper. And when it tried to touch me, I swear something in the universe just broke. I'm back in the hospital. When the thing touched me, I was wrenched back to my original spot at my computer so fast and violently. I now have a concussion because I think my brain bounced around in my skull. Somehow, nothing else is physically wrong with me. I feel like the force should have ripped my limbs off. I only have a theory on what happened. I don't think that Egghead was the same one I saw before. I think this one was... Was... Was Sean. And I think he was trying to communicate. It's possible he's been trying for a while. And that's what that scratching sensation was. I guess he figured out how to be different things with his ability. Maybe could even pass forward or backward in time. But I think it took a physical toll on him. I think that's why he looked like an egghead. I don't know why he looked like a living shadow. But maybe he like smeared himself across time. Maybe the other egghead was someone else who tried to meddle even more. I haven't even seen anything strange since I was frozen. There was somehow one more incident. Sean and an unknown man were found dead in a local warehouse. Cause of death is unknown. Both bore strange burns on their bodies that no one could identify. The police think they found a genetic link between the unknown man and someone else. That person is only 14 right now. But they've already got a rap sheet. I went to identify Sean's body and yep, it was definitely him. He looked older than I remember. I don't know if that has something to do with his power or not. He did have a beard that looked way thicker than three weeks worth. Well, my fiance is gone. I think the threat is too. Are there more? How far do their powers go? I'm scared. I really wish Sean was here. <sighs> Update. I know I haven't posted yet, but I found something. Sean left one last message. I'm not sure how. It was sitting on a table when I got home from the hospital. It was where the shadow looked like it was writing something. I've got it typed out here. Here it is. <clears throat> Dear Delilah, I don't know why I can do the things I do. I figured I was just a mutant or some shit, but I'm not the only one. The first one I saw came from the future. It learned how to turn back time, and it wreaked havoc. Every time it moves something that shouldn't move, I feel it. It sounds like massive metal stabs slabs grinding against each other every time something someone dies it becomes a, a cocophony <laughs> cacophony whatever it's doing something is breaking i figured out how to do new things but it hurts only thing that doesn't hurt is what i used to do where i just move around in a frozen moment Anything else 
feels like it's stretching me. I think I understand. I think uh, it's stretching me. Oh, I think I understand now. It is stretching me. It's making me exist in multiple moments at once in the same universe. That's not supposed to be possible. That's why my skin is fading. That's why when I look in my reflection's eyes, I see those white voids. The other egghead was hiding in a single moment, but then it came after you. I chased it away, but I was following in that moment for what felt like years. I think he was toying with me. After all that time, the great and sound barely phases me, but I feel the effects getting worse. I finally figured out how to fight it, and I think I've cornered it. I have it frozen in a moment, but I had to come back and try to say goodbye first. I love you, Delilah. The only way I can think to stop this thing will kill me too. I wish I could spend my life with you, but it's better this way. The few of us time manipulators there are, the better. I know that sounds like bullshit, but please understand. I've seen the void beyond the egghead's eyes. It leads somewhere outside of time as we know it, outside of our universe even. I've seen the things there that I want to get in. I hear them talking to me, trying to get me to meddle with time even more. I won't do it. <sighs> I'm sorry, Delilah. I'm so, so, so sorry. Also, I'm sorry if I scared you. Well, I'm an egghead now, too. Live your best life, and don't forget about me, please. Yours forever, Sean. I won't forget you, you fucking idiot. I, I hate you. <laughs> I hate you for disappearing. I love you, Sean. Rest in peace. Forever.